Hi there. In the last video, we created a new action for creating books. And the action has a conditional here. If the book uh, saves successfully, then we return a 201 created status. And if it's not created successfully, then we return um, an error, in this case, um, an unprocessable entity. So in this video, I wanted to cover status codes in a bit more detail. The first thing to know is um, each status code has a unique number or code. So created is 201 and unprocessable entity is uh, 422, uh, I believe. Um, so, so the first thing the first thing to, that you can do is you can actually write the the code um, in here like that. Uh, but Rails has um, symbols which map to the status code, and that just tidies up the code a little bit more. It means that you don't have these uh, random integers. So the preferred way to do it is to use um, use the simple representation here. And we can actually look up, um, there's a great um, resource for this, uh, Rails status codes. And you can see someone's actually built a site, Rails HTTP status codes, so railsstatuscodes.com. And you can see all of the codes and the symbol that they map to. So I'll briefly just talk about some of the most commonly used. So we have a 200, which is um, normally the, the default status code um, that Rails will use when a request is um, served correctly. So if we jump back over to the first example that we built back in the previous video, we didn't specify the status code. So by default, Rails will just use the uh, 200, assuming that there's no uh, error. Um, then the, the other one that we're using is the 201, which is to indicate a success response again, but it specifically means that uh, a resource was created on the server. Um, 204 is often is also used for um, uh, sometimes for a delete request for example where um, there's nothing to necessarily return um, that but the um, the server is just saying that the request was served correctly so the resource was deleted but there's not, nothing to return um, so then we can move on to the, the 300s. 301 is, is commonly used for redirects. Um, so the, the server is saying that the requested resource has moved um, and it will then uh, return to the client a new um, resource to go and fetch. Um, and let's have a look at some of the 400s. So we have uh, 400, which is a generic, uh, more generic 400. 401 unauthorized is, is used quite a lot for um, authentication. So if you if a user tries to access a resource that they're not authorized for, um, so for example, if they're not logged in or they're trying to access something, uh, maybe a profile of another user, we should get a, a 401 back. Um, of course, 404 is a fairly well-known one, which is trying to access a route or a resource that doesn't exist. Um, what else do we have? 422, unprocessable entity. This is quite common if you're trying to... Um, uh, well, so we're using it. We're using it in our case because the... 
um, if we hit this this part of the code, it means that the the request coming in was formatted correctly. There were no issues, but the um, there were some errors creating the book. So maybe the params were invalid. So 422 kind of means that the server understood the request, um, but it wasn't able to process the um, the desired outcome. Um, uh, and then I won't cover too many more, but the the last um, the last group are the 500 errors. These are normally implemented by the framework or the web server. So if your web server goes, if your application goes down, then um, you might get a 500 or a 502 uh, to indicate that your <clears throat> your um, user isn't doing anything wrong. It's just that your your service is uh, down effectively. The reason that status codes are important is because they provide information back to the client. Um, in our case, we're building an API, and so um, consumers are or users of the API are going to be building applications around that API. So it's really important that they know um, for a given request what the response is. If a request receives a 200, the, um, the application is going to do something different versus if they get a um, unauthorized request, for example. Um, so status codes are a really good high level um, piece of information for the client to use. Um, you know, if a, if a user tries to sign in and they get a 200, the, an application might then redirect them to, or, or sorry, make another API call, redirect them to another page. Um, if they get a, um, an unauthorized error, then the application might want to go into the response body um, check the errors and render those out to the user. So I hope you found that useful. In the next video, we're going to be building out the book model so that we can actually test validation errors. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.